We'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Today's date is February the 6th, 2023, and this is the Tell City Common Council. If everybody could please stand and we'll recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You all may be seated. Before we adopt the agendas, I do have one addition under new business item F. I uh, apologize, I did leave this off. It's the ARP funds. The committee met um, last week, week before last, something like that, I don't remember. And did um, approve three uh, to consider. So I just want to add that under item F, ARP funds, please. And if there are no other additions to the agenda, I'll entertain a motion to approve. We've got a motion made by John. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Philip. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Agenda stands approved. Next item is presentation of minutes for approval. We have three sets of minutes in here. We have January 3rd, January 17th, and we still have the ones from December 19th. Um, do you want to do them all at once or individual, Council? Some of you were here, some of you weren't. Sometimes I know people abstain if they weren't there. It's whatever you all want to do. It doesn't matter to me. I think, Julie, you weren't at one of them. I wasn't the 19th, the I think, maybe? No, John wasn't at the meeting. I wasn't at the January 3rd meeting. Yeah, and you can still approve them and vote in favor if you weren't here. I, 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 that issue came up and the I researched it. You, Philip, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. you do not have to have been present to, at a meeting to approve minutes. But it's, it's you guys' minutes, it's your all's motions. You decide, tell me what you want to do. Individual, we're all together. Is that all right for everybody? That's fine to me. Okay, is there a motion to approve the January 3rd, January 17th, and December 19th minutes? I'll make that motion. Motion made by Gary. Anybody second? I'll second that. Second by Phil. Love. Any further discussion? I have one item, and it doesn't necessarily need to be corrected in the minutes, but I'd like it to be notated in tonight's minutes. The two people that commented. December 19th meeting, they were not residents of the city. And when you read the minutes, it implies that they were residents of the city. Neither one of them are residents of the city of Tell City. Okay. I'd like that one to take the minutes. Okay. So, so motion's made and second. second. Um, any, any further discussion still? still? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Minutes stand approved. Next item on the agenda is comments of citizens. If there are any citizens that would like to make any comments, please step up to the microphone and state your name and address, please, for the minutes. Qualify for that, okay? But for him 
they stay in the town and have a reputable job and everything like that, you know, paying seven hundred dollars a month rent, he needs help. Okay, so so I'm taking a guy that's working, he's went to school, he's established, he he gets his back turned on by this portal company. Okay, uh, sex and scenario. Uh, even the older people, and that's why I mentioned, you know, I mean, I work with the factory for over 25 years. Uh, I work in the stock room and receiving the department uh, out of that factory. I knew hundreds of people. I talked to them, I, I heard every kind of thing that happens. So you take somebody that's at an older age, okay, 45, 50 years old, I'm 62, so I'm not making fun of that queen. Uh, but uh, they, they lose their life. Okay, the white one's divorce, they get, you know, the divorce, he loses his house, he loses his kids, he has to pay child support, he has to pay rent, he can't afford that, and this is a guy that desperately needs it, but yet, this humanity uh, will not, you know, they will turn their back on him, okay, so, so I think that's very discriminating, uh, I asked about maybe, you know, uh, studio apartment, you know, just for a single person to get on their feet, so the young person can do it, so the retired, you know, the guy don't want to be able to retire, and I'm paying around child support that the board, okay? So even in a third scenario, okay, the gay community, can they even marry in Indiana? I don't know what the same sex You can marry, you can marry anywhere in the United States. Okay, I did not know that. I thought that was still a question. Federal law. Okay. Yep. So, but anyway, really, they, they can't have kids, but yet if they want to stay in school, educate themselves and everything, uh, you know, they got their back turned, you know, they're, they're, uh, this community turns their back on them, too. So, I mean, there's, there's the young people, the gay people, the old people, you know, just off the top of my head, okay, this is habitat for humanity. Does not help them out, okay? Now, just because it helps a family out doesn't mean his family is not going to end up in divorce, okay? So, really, you know, I mean, there, there's just such a high divorce rate and everything. But uh, in, in my opinion, they also they try to say they help the homeless. I think that's awful. In, in my opinion, I think that's awful. I think it's very misleading, you know, because the, the, the people are not really homeless. These people have probably both got a job. They're getting all kinds of tax credits already, so the government's already helping them out. So here we are, you know, trying to help them out. And in that situation, I mean, they need it really. They don't, they don't need well, the land you give them. Okay, you give them land, property in this town. Okay, I'm, I'm just getting into this. I'm going to go expert what's going on in here and everything. That's why I try to follow these meetings every, uh, every week and everything like that. But, you know, for... The multiple reasons of the people that they are not helping. These are the people who need it the most. The people that have everything pulled away from them at an older age are the police officer that, you know, he won't start out, he's looking for life on the line, and this and that, you know. Those people need it the worst. And they're having, you know, they're getting their, you know, struck by all the uh, uh, rules and regulations. So I, if you can hand money to them, if they're going to come out and tell the city, I think you need to make the rules and regulations. I think you need to, uh, I'm not, I mean, really all of you to talk about it and set it up. But uh, that way, uh, they need to meet your needs, tell the city's needs, to where they, you know, they can uh, put in uh, an application for a need, you know, the people put in an application for a need, or put in an application for a hardship, because I know uh, I've been to hundreds of people there where I used to work. And I mean, because of the hardships and everything, there's a guy up there, a uh, matter of fact, up there at the Walmart right now, 78 years old, he will never be able to retire because of his wife being sick and everything, you know? And so, I mean, he doesn't have kids at 78 years old, but, uh, you know, I mean, he, he still wouldn't even qualify for this kind of. Uh, housing, you know, and, and it's, I, think, I, I think it's sad that we want to hand it to somebody that we have really mislabeled. Uh, so I know this is this is going to be coming up here, you know, this meeting and everything, 
Yeah, it'd be item F on the agenda. And, and there's some information um, that the clerk, treasurer, and myself received um, on Friday, or was it today? Or it was over the weekend, maybe. I, over the weekend. That kind of, we'll, we'll talk about the, um, the ARP funds and some things that it can and can't be used for. I just have a concern about, I, I kind of felt like the uh, cameras were ordered under the, the building light. You know, well, no, they were, they, no, Ron, the cameras were ordered under the ARP. Uh, committee approved them and gave a favorable recommendation, I believe. And then it came before this council for the to, for the purchase of them last year. It did. Mm -hmm. Both checks and balance. Yeah, it did. And it, it so they were they were approved. It's just back order stuff and getting actually the company to come in and set up. And I I think Brandon, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it next week or when are they come in to set those up? They've already started now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got that kind of cleared up. It, you never know if insurance, if it will or won't. I, I can't say it would, but it will save us hopefully on vandalism of our properties. Yeah. Okay. Well, we appreciate it, Ron. Thank you very much for your comments. Just for my clarification, Connie, this thirty-eight thousand and twenty-one dollars that we've appropriated for computer equipment is that for the cameras? No, no. Not. that was for like the server. Remember, city city hall purchase. Yeah. No, it was those funds were already carried over. I can, there you go. I can carry go. over those funds because we had a signed agreement with Astra to purchase those. There you go. Remember how much that was? Thank you, Brent. All right, we're still in comments of citizens. Any other comments? Have any citizens? Josh. Just state your name and address so for the minutes. Is, we always ask everybody to do that. Yeah, my name is Josh Harris. I'm a resident of Lorraine Island, Lake Indiana. I wasn't planning on speaking live, but I'm a great 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 Thank you. All. Thank you. If you could come up here, just so they can hear on the recordings. Uh, That's not what this is for. Yeah, 
No? Ron, if you get a chance, you might give Josh a call, and maybe he could you know, ask him some questions. Yeah. Ron, what we'll just I just out of every respect everyone's time. If you know if you get a chance, talk to Josh. I think he might be able to clarify, you know, get reach out to him. He may be able to explain the process some more. And he might be able to answer some of the questions that, that we didn't quite understand or wasn't explained well enough to you. And it may that will that could be my fault. So No, I understand. Well, I know they've built homes for people that are not married. I know that for a fact. I do know one lady. They, they have. And she lives on 9th Street there. It's a brand new home. She's actually in a wheelchair. They built that house to meet ADA standards for her because, you know, obviously, I, I know that as an example. And I don't think she would be upset if I explained that. But talk to Josh sometime, and they might help educate everyone about the process and, and who would qualify and who wouldn't. Or he could probably even get you a copy of the application for you to look at, and then it would really tell you that's what the application says. But just for, for clarity and just education, I know you're, you had questions, you want to get them answered. So he could answer better than I could. Cause I, sure. It's, there's a multitude of things, but recovery is, is one of them. You know, you could say lost revenue or something like that. Yeah. So, all right. Any other comments of citizens? Thank you both for your comments, too. Appreciate it. All right, committee and ward reports. We're going to start first with Ward 1, Mr. Larry Kleeman. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, to the planning commission meeting on January the 12th, uh, the main purpose of the meeting was reorganization. Mac Kale was elected president, Tim Reed vice president. Um, I was appointed as secretary, and we have a new recording secretary, Dodie Otto is now the recording secretary. Um, Julie Dixon uh, has decided to step down from that position. Um, I also attended a meeting, the ARP committee meeting on January the 18th. Um, attended the new senior <coughs> groundbreaking on January the 25th where Gary and Connie and the mayor and I had an opportunity to take a sledgehammer and off a couple of holes in the wall down there. Connie fixed the light. You, you hit it and it went out, and she hit it and went back on. <laughs> um, and it's great to see that project underway. Um, I also attended a habitat dedication for a new house that they built, 944 4th Street, which is down by the uh, levee. I uh, attended that on January the 27th with that um, new uh, single parent moved in to her new home that she purchased. Um, attended the Perry County Development Corporation annual meeting on January the 30th, um, which was a very interesting meeting. There's one thing that was stated at that meeting which I never really considered, which made a lot of sense to me. We talk about the need for housing, increased housing in this community. And I can't recall the exact dates, but David Goffman, who's the current um, chairman of the PCDC board, uh, gave a statistic where, we'll say, it's, he said it's 20 years ago. I, I don't remember the exact dates, but the, the data that he reported is what um, brought something uh, home to me, uh, talking about homes. For instance, 20 years ago, the average household size in Tell City was, say, roughly three people. Okay, I don't know 
1.76 or something like that. For today, the average household size is like one and a half or 1.7 something, but say it's one and a half. What that means is that just to stay even with your population, you have to create twice as many homes. Mm -hmm. John Shears talked about that many times and the, the need for homes, and I forgot his number, but it was a number that almost you thought was crazy, but when you think about what you're saying and what John's saying, it makes sense. Exactly. Uh, households have fewer members in them now, so you need more. Correct. And single parents, for whatever reason. And That's the first time I ever heard it mm -hmm. told that way. And it, it makes a Quality of affordable housing is an issue. It's not only, it's not only for growth, but it's to maintain our current population. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to mention, and I followed up on these, I had two constituent requests uh, during the past month uh, for a new street night at the dead in cul-de-sac on Perry Parkway. Currently there is no street light there and it's very dark. Okay. Have you? I, I've talked with uh, Superintendent Hicks. Okay. I've talked with the mayor briefly about it. Is that resident still want it? Yes. Last time we talked, he was going to check on it to double. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I talked to Andy. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. So we can maybe get down the next. Has he even not looked at it yet, or do you know? I, I think he's getting some information together. Okay. For the next board of works. I don't think he's been out there. Yet, okay. Okay. Um, the other request I had is for new larger street signs on Highway 66 um, at the intersection of William Tell Boulevard and Archer Hill Road. That's the intersection by McDonald's and Circle S. On the west side of 66 is Archer Hill Road. On the east side of 66 is William Tell Boulevard. The street signs that are there now, the one on Archer Hill is I don't know if you can even see it, let alone read it, yeah. uh, from the intersection. And, and we have to all of our, it's very small. And what they explained to me, and I think it makes a lot of sense, it'd be nice, and I think this is probably an end up request, if the streets could go up like they put on Washington mm -hmm. on Highway 66. I think it's also on Tell Street. Man, I don't know. Can't I know it's on Washington, or where you're at, yes, yeah. I do know that. Um, but, I, I mean, I, you know, we take it for granted. I mean, I, we do. You know, I turn at that intersection. You probably didn't know there was a sign there you turned out so much, didn't <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to look at it. So anyway, I, I just wanted to report on those two constituent requests, and, and uh, both of them. That street sign issue might be something to take to Pat and find out if he can speak to somebody at NDOT. I don't know if it. Well, NDOT would have jurisdiction of signs in the right of way, but but they'd probably ask us to provide the sign and then they'd put it up. If I, I, this is just me guessing. But. Well, we are in the process of getting our sign maker set up for all new street signs in the whole city, and so we'll. Just, well and just, it's just the, the uh, what I was told is it, it just kind of surprised that they when they did the paving. Paving. They went beyond that. Yeah, they did. But they didn't put up new signs. There. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Could be an oversight, or maybe they ordered the signs and somebody forgot to put. I don't, a line item in knows. a different budget. That's how. My, my, my past experience with NDOT is it can be that simple. It's just a line item in a different budget. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ward two, Julie. Okay, thank you. Ward 3, Philip. Uh, no report. All right, moving, moving down. down. Ward 4, Gary Morton. You saw the waste uh, <laughs> had a meeting at the end of January. Um, we had a problem with one of the buildings on site down there. Uh, it's used to store what, books, paper items, and things like that. So we can sell them. And the building had a roof problem. It needed a roof. And again, uh, it had some concrete block roof supports that had been 
damage, so the roof was kind of sagging. So we got that jacked up and put additional uh, supports on the roof. So the building is in good shape right now. Prices of commodities, again, that's one of our major sources of income there. Uh, not much changes. Uh, cardboard, glass, tin, staying about the same. Some weeks up, some weeks down, but no major increases or decreases. All the equipment there at the facility tends to be working well. The, uh, the belt that we bought, conveyor type belt, that seems to be working. And they, what do you call it? Compressing these things together. Compactor. Compactor seems to be working well as well. Okay. Uh, I had a couple of people tell me that uh, they wish we could do something about the, the standing water there at the site. Uh, again, this time of year, the area in front of the dumpsters where people can unload their things. You get out of your car and, and you're waiting in mucky stuff. Again, we've, t we've dumped tons and tons of rock up there over the years, but again, the, the uh, low boys and the, the equipment that runs back and forth across that kind of works it into the ground. And, and again, it, the water kind of stands up there, so I don't know if, if we could, wasn't that, one person told me maybe we could concrete those area, a pad area in front of those dumpsters and people could get out on that and stay on the concrete without uh, getting it all over the shoes and feet. But uh, we did talk about that toward the end of the meeting, but uh, nothing really happened with it. So, again, that is a, a point of concern there. Uh, the area doesn't drain very well, obviously, right there. It's a bloodline. It just doesn't drain well. That's about all. Okay. Thank you, Gary. John Little, Councilman at Large. Any statements from the City Attorney or Clerk Treasurer? I would like to uh, mention, I'm sorry I missed the Plan Commission on the 12th. Uh, I was at, at, at the funeral home. Um, I did get the updates. So I want to thank Doty for stepping up and uh, taking on the role of Recording Secretary. That's, that's the backbone. That's who does all the work. Um, and, and thank Julie Dixon for helping. She's going to continue to train Doty a little bit, so she's not just leaving her hanging on that. Yeah. They were on the phone today talking about stuff, so yeah. great. And anything from Connie? No. Okay. Thank you. Moving on the agenda, under old business, we don't have anything, so we'll move straight down to new business. Uh, lawnmower discussion. We have the Parks and Rec Director, Brandon Long, to discuss that. Okay. Council, do you have any questions for Brandon regarding that? Connie, that's something that ought to be advertised, correct? Correct. Uh, if this is something that Brandon is needing to go ahead and uh, get secured so that he does get the type of mowers that he's wanting, uh, we could do, the council could choose to do a motion of intent that they would approve this $19,000 at their next meeting because I do have to advertise it first. Yeah. It's but a, it's you a, can do a motion of intent. Yeah. You, you couldn't get it until next Mondays anyways, probably, could you? You'd really have to get on it to get it even for Thursdays. It's going to be very close. Yeah, so Monday makes more sense. Okay. Yeah. Council, what kind That's of questions correct. do you have for Brandon regarding this? I've never heard crickets from you guys it's, before. It's, it's ex I'm out of act. <laughs> if I'm understanding correctly, it's existing funds is basically what it is. It's not a request for appropriation of new funds. Um, it's funds that, that were just simply not appropriated at the... Well, the 16000 that comes 
for our parks from the school contract goes back into those parks to help maintain exactly. a lot of those not all of them obviously you know that more will be used at other properties besides that but the fields there's two baseball fields and the practice football field and maybe some smaller other things and a little bit of that but would be used towards it. so it's going back into the maintenance of it. it's not like it's been used on something that's not totally related to those those fields in any way or properties so that's good and what was the other amount you said I'm, i missed it three thousand three thousand was left over from last year's budget okay. yes yeah. got it sorry exactly okay. yeah we've discussed this before right and with manpower um time savings well you've done it he did and i don't remember the the total outcome of it all you did do a time study at one point on a lot of it and i understand that too so council i'm looking for any motions that either for or against or i'll make a motion of intent to Parks and Rec's budget. Okay, we have a motion made by Larry. Is there a second? I second it by Julie. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. All right. Thank you, Brandon. Sure, sure. If you want, yeah. No, I do hope we at the ARP. I do hope something that the ARP committee, which I'm on and the council considers in the future, is some Wi Fi in our parks. Um, that was an intention of ARP funds national, I think, when it came out to help with because not everybody can afford internet. Let's just be honest. There, it, that everybody can afford it. It's not cheap. Most people have to rely on their cell phones for their mobile data. I get that. Um, so people, you know, even out in the county, it's PSC's done a great job of getting it to them and still affording it. So having that as an option for especially with schools with a lot of e-learning now. Some people have Wi-Fi at their home and they can't, they can't log in to school for their e-learning or whatever, they miss out on that. And that's, that's, we need to work on that, I think. At least City Hall Park, maybe. I know during COVID we had City Hall Park and the depot and the library had options. And I'd hope Sunset Park would be a good place and maybe City Hall Park and even at the swimming pool would be, or that area would be a good spot. Cause that's kind of three different spots in the town that gives an option. Yeah. We can bring it in. Sure. And that's, that gives people options. And even Castle Park would be a nice option because, that, again, that's a whole other neighborhood by the school. You know, and I think it'd be important. To do it. I know that's not on the agenda, but I just, I hope they consider it and look into that in the future. Well, we got item F is ARP funds. We're going to talk about that during it. That's part of it, right? It was added to the agenda. Yeah, it was item F. I forgot. I well, Nathan wanted to be last, but sorry, Nathan, Brandon. 
<laughs> it's me. I, hey, I told, it totally slipped my mind, and I apologize. All right. Thank you, Brandon. Get this camera reset here. All right. Additional appropriations, item B under new business. Um, Council, what this is, if you look, just the main ones are going to be your ARP, coronavirus, local uh, physical recovery fund. You'll notice that these are some things that the council allocated last year, but didn't get spent, and we didn't have any, we'll call it invoices or whatever you want to call it, to carry it over. So it's under the, the council which ones, if any or all, that they want to put towards um, reappropriating this year's of the ARP funds. Um, the, the, you know, you see like there's a nonprofit small business. We allocated 150000 and you can see only 129500 is left of that. You can decide to keep that or take it out. The consulting... They will need to keep, if they choose to change it in any way, I do need to keep 23200 in there for the Okay. The consulting services, I don't think I would reduce that just because that's with Baker Tilly. That's helped us a lot with our, um, it's 15000 I think. It was 15000 or 16000 and this is what's left. The website update, JF Cool Pool Expenses, which. So we spent $13,000 with Baker Tilly? Yes. Correct. The pool update for the, the uh, Tell City website, we're still working on that. That I mean, you guys, are you're in charge. This is your money. I'm just explaining it. JFK pool expenses, we've got 25 left in there. Our hope is to put, if you remember that awning that was at Sonic, that the developer of that site for the car wash donated to the city, and we had it disassembled. We're going to have that reassembled to put up over where you would call the, where the kiddie pool used to be. It's just a concrete pad there now. That'll provide shade. There's literally, I'm not sure sitting at a table number, there's no shade. And if you're a grandparent, if your kids, grandkids out there, or a parent, or whoever, you want some shade sometimes. And that'll provide that shelter for them. So we did allocate that. The City Hall downstairs restrooms, we actually just received um, a bid that came in very close to the 15,000. It's a little bit over, if you don't count the door part, to make those ADA accessible. We got three quotes on that one, actually. And we got one that came in finally close to where we wanted it. Windy Creek improvements, we're still working on. Joe Schaefer Park, Castle Park, some. Uh, we allocated 175000 towards it. Parks Director and I have been working on that. We're ready to I basically hit submit and order on that. Prices came in really good. Uh, we're looking at using about 150000 of it for the equipment itself. 25000 would go towards any mulch, uh, other expenses, the sidewalks to go up to it. The leadership Perry County class, it's my understanding that they're going to take it on as a project to construct a shelter house there maybe, so that helps freeze up a little money where we can get some extra equipment. Um, the dog park, Brandon's been working with a lot of people that attend the dog park, and he's got some ideas as far as some features that they would like to see. I don't have a dog, so don't ask me what a dog would like to see. But they came up with some neat, like a water feature. Again, I don't have dogs, so... If you cut out the dog park, you would have a room full. Of food. Yeah, no, I'm, oh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it. The pickleball courts from Hagenham Park, we know we approved that. That's going to put that surface on it. That will help with it. Restroom improvements in the park departments, that's kind of a little bit ongoing. Last year, they done a lot of painting in them, and they're still working on them. Beautification committee, uh, $4,700. Um, they do have some projects that ties into what used to be called Brick by Brick, which is now Tell City Strong, which is the downtown group that we're redoing. They've got some banners and other stuff that they're wanting to do. Wastewater extension is Forest Canton, right out across from the hospital. Um, that's a project that's moving along very fast, and I think it's going to get going very soon. John Shear and the Redevelopment Commission is working on. Computer equipment, we did ask about that. Part of that's for our server that hasn't been taken. That'll take a big chunk of that out, won't it? Really? Yes. Yes. Is, kind of, is, is this will be any computer equipment, any kind of updates or anything that we need between now and 2026, basically? Okay. Sports complex, 500,000. As you know, that's something moving on. We plan to still break ground um, this summer with that. And then the leafer for the street department, that was something that was approved pretty much right at the end. So that's why it hasn't been purchased yet. So any questions regarding these? I just And the other one's upstairs, above. I'm going to have to let Connie explain those a little better. I just... 
on, on the point for the police department on their uh, taser and gun lease, it has, it has been discovered, discovered that the last two years we were not, not paying the correct amount on the taser lease, so, so we, we, we still, still owe them additional $2,300. And, and they do have, have that in the local public safety fund to pay that. that. And, and then the local road bridge matching grant, this is for our community crossing round two from 2022, ones that we just uh, accepted bids last, on my, last at meeting. the last meeting. And this is the total amount that that bid come in for. Mm -hmm. And that's paving that will has to be completed by June 15th of this year. We just applied again for close to that same amount, um, not too far from it. Uh, the end of January. So we hope to hear from that in April or so. We're not sure the exact date. So any questions on any of these additional appropriations or any that you do not want to carry over? Speak now if ever hold your peace. Okay. Sure. Okay. We have a motion made by Larry. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second it by John. Any further discussion? What, is it, what do you mean by general uses? Do we still have to reappropriate it? What do you mean general uses? When it would go into the general fund, and then if you wanted to use well, it, 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 I guess I should say. Stay in the ARP. Yeah. Yeah. It stays. So basically, at the last ARP committee, I think we had, after what we've kind of allocated and it's like promised, but gave favorable recommendations. We have like maybe forty or fifty thousand or thirty. It wasn't a lot. So now that money go back on that. So now rather than having that thirty or forty fifty, they'd have one thirty, one forty one. I don't remember. Okay. I'm sorry. A lot of a lot of discussion. So and then any of the others that you may or may not approve tonight would go back into that that pot for reappropriation to something else. So by Larry's motion by doing that. Yeah, whatever recommendations come before the ARP committee or to the to the council, you know, however you want to do it. So, motion, motion made by Larry. Oh. Small business still apply for any of this? They they would not be able to apply at this point. We've we've opened that up and we had so many apply and we actually paid Baker Tilly to come down and we told anybody that's applying should attend that meeting. We recorded it, put it online for small businesses so they would know how to fill the application out and include every document we asked for. Um, we've done everything we could do to help them, and some chose not to, for whatever reason, didn't have enough documentation they're supposed to have in there, so they got denied for that reason. We did not open that back up. We did not open that back up. We just, we felt it wasn't, I felt it wasn't right to open back up since we offered, we paid Becker Tilly literally several thousand dollars to come down here and do that presentation. and. I can't help it that they didn't put that in their application. That's not my fault. We literally done everything we could do for them. Most of, I, I don't know. I've not seen the invoices, but I suspect most of the consulting time that we paid Baker Tilly for um, was for the not-for-profit and small business. I would say 75% easy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Easy, so, yeah. So we've spent... We've spent if, the majority if, of it. If, uh, if 75 of that 10, was, ten thousand or so, okay, I bet at least. Then we spent ten thousand dollars or forty some thousand dollars worth of grants. Yeah, you could say that. Up, but we had it up to that one hundred and fifty. I think we we did allocate originally, but well, no, but Chris, yeah. I mean, what we spent though, hmm? I mean, we spent ten thousand administrative funds to mm -hmm. our well, we would have awarded more, but some were they had to filter through them, and yeah. you could count if you want to count those. Yeah. Yeah. What's the normal fee percentage for like a grant? Is it like ten percent or? Well, I, they charged us one percent of what was awarded, which was one point six and some change. 
So that's how much we allocated roughly for their services. And we'll still need their services on stuff. You know, um, we had an email with them, which we'll talk about later under the ARP part of the um, agenda, where they came back with some, you know, there were some questions asked to them, and, and they answered them, you know, and whether you agree or disagree with them, they did give us how, what the rules state. So, I mean, I, again, that's, we hired them because I would like to think that they are the professionals and they know it they're better than I do, and hopefully they keep us out of trouble. That's, that's the goal. I mean, they better. <laughs> I'm going to be pretty upset with them. So we had a motion made by Larry. Is there a second on that motion? Oh, John second. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Any further discussion? You know, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Transfers. Resolution 2023-1. Resolution by the Tell City Common Council to make necessary transfers between classifications within several budgets. Transfer of cash for city match on community crossings grants. This is what Connie was kind of talking about earlier, right? Or is this the new one? No, this is, yeah, this is the one she was just talking about. So MVH, Motor Vehicle Highway Fund, transfer from... Uh, 2022-01-001-363.00 Motor Vehicle Highway Street and Alley Maintenance, $38,463.88 to fund 2403 Local Road Bridge Match Grant Fund. Motor Vehicle Highway Restricted Fund, I'm not going to read the fund number, that bores people. <laughs> From round two, 2022, $150,000 to Local Road and Bridge uh, Matching Fund. Adopted the sixth day of February 2023. Is there any questions regarding this resolution? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, or is there a motion? motion Sorry. <laughs> Who wants to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion made by Gary. Is there a second? Seconded by Larry. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I was just seeing if everybody was paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, yes, I will. I just didn't do that yet. But I Moving on to item D, two-year outstanding warrants. So um, basically, in a nutshell, if we would issue someone a check for either uh, general fund, which there were none, trash department, which were none. In this case, water department, there was a warranty, uh, warrant check, uh, 9144 for $1,700 and some change. That was under the water department. Uh, under the wastewater department, warrant 9517, uh, and that was over 5000 and just some small change there. And then Tulsa Electric Department had several of them. Um, Fifty-eight dollars, a three dollar, seventeen, two dollar, one dollar, twenty-five, twenty-five, and an eighteen for a total, one hundred fifty-one dollars and seventy-two cents. Basically, these are checks we issued people two years ago that they, for whatever reason, decided not to cash or didn't didn't need the money or want it. So those checks will be voided, and those monies will be deposited back in their original funds. And these were from twenty twenty-two. No, it was twenty twenty for twenty twenty-two. Yep. There's too many twos in there. Uh, any questions regarding this? And some of these are commercial businesses, some are residentials. So if there's a mix. And if you want to see a full list of actually the names that's not on here of the individuals, you can if you want. Connie's got the list. If there are no questions, I entertain a motion to approve. Motion made by John Deere, second. Seconded by Larry. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on agenda, item E, we have Nathan Held of Indiana Region 15 Plan Commission. Uh, I'll let Nathan come on up and give his presentation. Thank you.
Nathan and Region 15 and, and Lisa and all of them and Leah have been a great partner with Tell City over the years. Um, most recently, uh, they helped us a lot with the hospital grant, which we're still planning to go back in for that, but we'll see. Um, also, they helped us with our comprehensive plan. That was a grant Region 15 helped us with. The uh, peer project that we're doing, when Secretary Buttigieg came in, that was a, a grant that Region 15 helped us with as well. Um, children I'm missing, that's really, there's one I'm missing. Th yeah, there's a bunch of, yeah, there's a lot going on, but those are some current ones that they've helped us with. Um, they the swimming pool, the one through the uh, land conservation, and there you go. It's a, it's a title I don't use a lot. Yeah, so that was another one that we just wrapped up last year. So they've been very good partners, and they're, it's a great that we have them around to help us. And so anybody have any questions for Nathan or Regent? Nathan, 15? where is your home office at? What county is it in? It's, 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 Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Okay. it's on First Street. Okay. Turn right. <laughs> I know how to get there. I've been there many times. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on under new business, um, item F, which was added, is the ARP funds. Connie's got those numbers for you. Um, we'll talk about them one at a time, I guess, as it would be best. Uh, Okay. We'll we'll kind of talk about them one at a time, and then as we go through them, that's why you don't read them all. There's two others, three others, I think. So seventy-five thousand to go towards the Tell City. Seventy-five thousand go towards the Tell City School Corporation for an activity bus. They originally asked for, I believe, a hundred. We kind of just settled on seventy-five for right now. The county ARP did give a hundred thousand, I believe, for the, uh, the activity bus. Still, the school was original. Leave if we had given a hundred, if we had given a hundred, the county given a hundred. I think there was like thirty-three thousand or thirty-something thousand the school would had to give in. We're going to see if the school kind of come up with the rest. Uh, if they can't, we told them come back to us and we'll see what we've got left to do. But that night we had a lot of requests on our, and we don't have a lot of money left. So we're like, can we give all that and have nothing left? We just didn't know. So I think we were trying to be a little conservative that night. Um, is there any questions regarding that bus? If no one's, I wish I'd have brought the picture. Um, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Any ideas? I mean, I don't know if you've heard. How many would they seat? God. Activities bus about half the size of a regular. They, they seat, seat 40. They can yeah. work a 60 passenger school bus to, uh, they take the bench seats out and it, then they put in 40 captain's chairs. It's converted to. It'll have a Greyhound bus kind of look, but it actual, it's, a real, it's an actual school bus that's converted. And it will have storage underneath it. Have storage underneath it, which is one of the major problems. Especially the football team. And band. And the band. Yeah. Is, uh, they have yeah. Well, band they have, have their own trailers. Yeah. All the they have to equipment. pack their gear. This would yeah. eliminate at least some of those trips. And it'd be used for boys and girls. It's not just, everybody thinks it's like boys football or something. No, it's all the sports. And, and, and band. And, and band. Mm -hmm. It'd be all decorated out and have Tell City marksmen on it and everything. So, like sometimes you see, uh, other communities have these buses, and it's also a pride thing, and it's a it's a marketing tool for our community as well, too. I, I think it's also uh, improved safety with the transportation of our students. Um, yeah. So, any other questions on it? Well, my question is that obviously there's going to be times when you've got two or three groups that might want the vehicle at the same time. What determines? Who gets to use it? Who Athletic director or the principal of the school, school. not me. <laughs> not <laughs> us. We'll, we'll put Gary in charge of it and let you do it. No, no, no. no one, I don't want to that one. They'll draw stock. They'll, they'll, they'll draw Once they draw the bus, it's the school's bus. Yeah. yeah. I know, but I'm just saying I, what, what criteria determines, okay, these guys want it and these ladies want it. Who gets the bus? We didn't ask that. I hope. I guess the school board would have. I wouldn't let. I wouldn't get hung up on that. But. As citizens, so they could. I, I would assume it's going to be. The decision is going to be based upon. 
which use is going to provide the most savings. If, I mean, I just have to guess if there's a distance and so forth. A football game and, and some other athletic event at the same time, football team's probably going to get it because of the savings with the storage and everything, so they don't have to take multiple. I'm just saying I hope that they establish some guidelines because that's going to happen. Yeah, they will. That's going to happen. And that's why I suspect, like most things, the bottom line is going to be the guideline. I did run this by uh, Chris with Baker Tilly this morning. Mm -hmm. And he came back and said this is an eligible expense. So I just, we did, that's when you say the consulting money that we put towards them, did it go towards all the other, you know, the small business nonprofits? They went towards stuff like this, asking those kinds of questions for their research and their expert opinions. And I figured it was because the county had already approved it, but I'm just doing my due diligence and checking it off. So, is there any uh, private donations? No, no. The county gave 100. We're at, we're recommending 75. The school would be responsible for the remaining balance. They may ask for some private donations. I, I don't know. That would be up to the school what they want to do. Um, they needed. They, I mean, they're they're short still, uh, but I think they can come up with it. And if not, I told them to come back. So we'll see. They may be back. They may not. But uh, it's their their choice. So, is there any motions on this one? I'll make a motion to accept to approve that. Okay, we have a motion made by John. Is there a second? I'll second that. Do you want it as a motion of intent that you will approve it at your next meeting when I advertise it as an additional appropriation? That's why I told him. That's what we would have to do. So they're making a motion on it anyway? That's what I told him to do. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would be the appropriate process. So, but first off, who's... Who, we got John made a motion. Who's going to take the second? Larry and Gary, did. Gary both did at the same time. Is it Gary? All right. So motion made by John, seconded by Gary. Any further discussion? If you none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Uh, let Connie get her notes. Next one. And then the next item here is 50,000 for Habitat for Humanity. And then the liquid go towards a home that is currently in the process of being built at 48 Street. Okay. So, I do have a, we have a hiccup with this one. So, Kelly did reach out to Baker Tilly. Chris is the guy that's been helping Chris Brunner with Baker Tilly. She proposed a question to them asking if this is an allocated expense. I'm trying to find where. It's at the bottom of the second page. Yes. Oh, yeah, her question. I'll just read Kelly's question, and then I'll read Baker Tilly's answer so everybody's clear. And Kelly's the chairman of the committee, so that's why she did reach out. I have a quick question for you in regarding the Tell City ARP funds for the purpose of donating them to a local nonprofit organization. Habitat for Humanity is a local nonprofit who made a request for $50,000 in ARP funding to be used for a future house that they intend to build. Does this qualify as an, all an allowable expense using city ARP funds, and if so, what is required of them to show that the funds were utilized for this purpose? Generally, the city government does not issue funds uh, to local nonprofits for this purpose, so I wasn't sure if it would be allowable or not. Now, Chris's response was, I hope all is well. The city's allocation can be considered revenue replacement um, in its entirety. The funds can be ex uh, expended the funds for any purpose that the city would legally be able to spend its old funds on. Since you mentioned the city does not issue funds to local nonprofits for that purpose, it would be an ineligible expense for ARP funds. It wouldn't be an eligible expense, sorry. Additionally, donations would be not uh, to be considered an eligible ex uh, use of ARP funds as a matter of regulation, and he refers to some code in here. Um, this allows funding, contributions, or donations. The city could partner with Habitat for Humanity in some other capacity, such as issuing grants to offset costs to low-income families for construction houses. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Chris. So it, I, I'll let you guys discuss this. this well, I'm, I'm going to speak, speak to real quick. Because so. I'm the one that brought it up to begin with. First of all, the said for the purpose of donating funds to Habitat. That is not the purpose. That misrepresents what we are doing or proposing. We are proposing exactly what he said 
The city could partner with Habitat for Humanity, such as this one grants offset 